Hi, Nick Granville from Wellington, New Zealand. I thought I'd do a lesson this time on chords because my last two lessons were on the minor pentatonic scale and ways of expanding that. This time I'm going to do how to expand chords. So one of the easiest ways to, to expand your chord knowledge and your chord vocabulary, chord voicings and so on, is to take chords you already know and work them through. And the way you do that is taking, say, a voicing like this, which is C, G, B, E, C major 7. Now, if you're an intermediate player, you should already know that voicing. It's, it's pretty standard. So we take that standard voicing and we figure out a whole lot of voicings along the neck based on that. Now, if we look at that chord, if we take the C note, let's move it up to the nearest note in the chord, which would be an E note. Right, so that's that E note there. So C, there's the new note of our new voicing. G note, we'll go up to the nearest note, would be a B. Now we have those two notes of our new voicing. Our B note would go up to our C. Right? And our E note goes up to our G. So now we have. So this one here is called the root inversion. And this one here is called the first inversion. Alright? So root inversion, first inversion. Take the same thing, let's do move up to the next voicing. E would move up to G, B would move up to C, and so on and so on, and we would end up with this. No, notes in that are G, C, E, and B. Still a C major 7, it's just inversion 2. So we have root inversion, first inversion, second inversion, and then if we were to take it up again, we would end up with a third inversion, which would be B. G, C, B, E, G, C. Right? Now we took something that we already know and we now have four voicings of the same thing. Some of them will sound better than others, but they're all useful in some way. All right, so if we take that further, we can take the same voicing here, which was our first inversion. Let's move it on to the next set of four strings. So E could be E, it's the exact same note. B, B, and we would end up with so E, B, C, G. Right? Sounds nice. In fact, in a lot of ways it sounds better than that. That sounds it's definitely easier to play anyway. So if we take that and we do the same process, if we go E goes up to G, B goes up to C, C goes up to E, and G goes up to B, we end up with you can finger it like that or like that, it doesn't matter. So we have G, C, E, B. And if we were to do that again, we would end up with, which doesn't sound particularly appealing, but it's still a good passing chord, and, and then of course the octave of the first one. Pretty chords. Right, and if we could do the same thing on the bottom four strings, we would end up with, Now that chord there is the same as that chord, is the same as that chord. So I tend to not use that one there, I tend to use the ones on the other four strings because they're just easier to get to. Um, and anything that's easier to get to is going to make you play better and sound better. To turn that into a dominant, what we're going to do is we're going to just flatten the seventh of the scale. So in this case we're in C, so the seventh would be B flat. Would be our chord, we would have C, G, B flat, and E. Now, common voicing used a lot. And of course we can work that through just like we did before. So now we have... And of course we can have the same thing on the next set of four strings. And of course we can have the same thing on the bottom four strings. As I said before, the bottom four strings tend to get mushy a little bit, but sometimes that can be exactly what you want. Um, I quite like finishing chord tunes on those low voicings, they just sound quite rich. Nice way to finish a tune. And of course we can do the same thing, but if we take that dominant chord, so we have C, G, B flat, and E, we can turn it into a minor, you flatten the third, so it has a minor has a flattened third and a flattened seventh. So we take the E note and move it down to E flat. And of course
course we would have voicings all up the neck just as we did before and of course on the next set of four strings The next step I would suggest you do is to start organizing these into two five ones because in jazz music especially two five ones are a common place. So you want to know how to take these through two five ones. For example, if I take the C major seven, the two chord before that would be D minor seven, and then I could go G seven like this, to C major seven. But there's a better way to do that. A better way would be to take D minor seven like that, which is a drop two voicing, as we did before and then try and find a G7 that's on the middle four strings. So we would have this. And then to C. Now we have D, A, C, F, and D, G, B, F to our first voicing. So it sounds smoother, it sounds more like a piano player would play chords, they don't do big jumps, whereas guitar players often do big jumps. Right, so if we take our D minor 7 that we had there, we can have our second voicing along from that, our first inversion, which would be... And as we did before, we don't want to jump down to that, and then to there, we want them all together. So we go... It's D minor 7, and then we go to the nearest G7, which would be... To C major 7. Now we have a really pretty 2-5-1. Two, 2, there's our root. 5, there's our root. And 1, there's our root. And the cool thing about those chords is they don't have the root note on the bottom. Right. And we can do those with all the voicings. We could go... And on all the sets of strings. Hope you've enjoyed that and found that valuable. If you want to get um, the diagrams, you can go onto my website. I'll have all of these on my website, www.nickgranville.com. Check it out. Um, I'll have diagrams of how those drop two chords work along the neck. You can watch the video to check it out. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. More to come. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.